Hi everyone, I hope all of you are doing well. So quite a few students reached out to us and asked if we can make a video on how to use the on-screen calculator which is provided by the CAT. So we thought let's make a video on it. Now this is the on-screen calculator that you will have on the CAT day. You must have also received a mail recently from IMK in which it is mentioned towards the end. There's a point, I think the last point where it talks about getting yourself familiar with this particular calculator. So spend some time with it. If you haven't been using calculator, I would say that you at least take one or two SIM cards where you try and use it for some of the questions to be familiar with all the features. But I'm going to share with you uh, all the functionalities that this particular calculator has. So if you look at this, it of course is a normal regular calculator that is there with all the digits. So you're going to have all the digits from zero to nine and you can just enter whatever calculations that you want to do. Here, I will take you step by step through all the operations that you can do, right? So this is the, the keypad firstly, which is containing all the digits. There is also the decimal point that you want to use. So let's say you want to do 2.3, you will be able to do that. This particular button, which is C that you have is to clear everything. So it will, it will clear out all the functions. Uh, it will clear out all the operations that you have done and the displayed value as well. So now when you look at this particular thing, this is very simple. Here you have the core mathematical operations that you do, right? Which is going to be division, multiplication, subtraction, and addition. So if you actually hover over this, in case you uh, are referring to the link that was given, they have got the uh, spelling of the subtraction wrong. So both at M minus and here, the spelling of subtraction is wrong. I hope they fix it. So division, multiplication, subtraction, and addition. So let's first do some quick sums. So we can do, let's say 96 divided by eight, and that is going to give you 12, right? So this is the division, then multiplication. So let's say five into six, that gives you 30. 56 minus 26, so that is going to give you 30. And then if you want to just add 23 plus 23, 46, right? So very simple, basic mathematical operations that are there. Then comes the next set of things. So here you will see four things. So you have square root percentage one upon X, which is inverse. And then you have the equal to sign, which is again, something that all of you are familiar with. So let's start here, right? So square root percentage and one upon X or inverse. So let's say if I want to take square root of a particular number, right? So let's say I have 65 and I want to take square root of that. I enter the number first and then I click on square root. So here it will show me an expression that is you're taking square root of 65. And when I click on equal to, it will give me the value, which is 8.06. As you are aware, 64 square root is eight. So this is going to be eight point something. So that is what it is. And that is where a lot of times you will not need the calculator, especially if the numbers are easily accessible. Uh, a lot of students would not end up using calculator to do something like this, because most of the times you're just going to need that the answer is eight point something and not that it is 8.06, okay? Let's clear this out. The next is going to be percentage. Now, let's say if I want to calculate 25% of something. So let's say I want to do 25% of 56. I say 25% 56 and the answer that you're going to get is going to be 14. So at the top, again, it will show you the expression that you're taking 25% of 56 and here it will display the answer to you. So again, pretty simple. Then comes one upon X. So it is taking inverse of any particular number. So let's start with a simple number, let's say 25. I want to take one upon 25, which all of you know the answer to. So I enter 25, then I click on reciprocal of 25, and then I say equal. So that is going to give me 0 0.04, okay? So these are the three operations here, square root, percentage, and reciprocal. Let's clear this out. Now let's talk about the buttons in red. So there are three buttons. The first one is backspace. So if I do say one, two, three, four, five, and I want to remove some digits, I click on backspace. So it will become one, two, three, four. So it starts removing digits from the extreme right end. So I remove all of the numbers. So this is the functionality for this button. C basically clears out everything. So whether it is uh, the expression that you've written or the value that is displayed, it will remove everything. For example, if I do say 45 into two, now I have 90. So this is the expression that I did. This is the value that I got. The moment I click on C, all of that is gone, okay? So this is like having a clean slate. Then comes this, which is plus minus. So what you're doing here is basically you are switching signs. So if I, let's say have number five and I click here, it becomes minus five. 
I again click on it, it becomes 5. So if I want to change the sign of a particular number, I'll be able to use this particular functionality. So we have covered pretty much everything here. This is the part where a lot of students get firstly scared because they haven't used calculators like this a lot. Uh, and that is why this is where I'm going to spend more time explaining to you what these functions are. Now, most of the time you will not end up using this, right? Because uh, let's say, for example, you're doing two separate calculations and you want to store value of one particular calculation. You want to calculate another thing and then add those two values together then you can use the memory function. So the M basically stands for memory. So you have MC, MR, MS, M plus and M minus. Now MC, right, is basically you are clearing out the memory. So right now there is nothing in the memory that you have stored. So think of it as uh, there is some place where you're writing a number. So let's say I do one calculation, the outcome of that is let's say 30. And I want to store it somewhere so that I can use it at a later point of time. So that is why I'm storing it in the memory in terms of calculator. Then you have MR, which is recall. So what you're trying to get is what is the value that is stored in the memory? If I want to retrieve that or recall that value, then I use the MR function. MS stands for memory store. So what you're doing is you're putting a value in the memory. So let's say I want to store the value 30. I will say MS. M plus is if you want to increment the value which is there in the memory by a certain number and M minus is if you want to decrease the value in the memory by some number. We'll of course use some operations, some uh, particular numbers and examples to show how to use this. So let's start. Firstly, there is nothing in the memory right now because the moment there is something in memory, you will see an M there. So wait, I'll show you how it works. So let's say I'm doing some calculation and I'm going to add two things. There is some number that I have in mind and I'm going to do some additional calculations and then I add it. So let's say the first number that I have is let's say 56. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to store this in the memory. How do I do that? I use the MS button, which is memory store. So I click on this and here you will see M. Now what this M is telling you that there is something in the memory. What is that something is number 56 because I just entered it. But now if I want to display it, let's say I do C, that thing is gone. So how would I know what is there in the memory, which is M? What exactly is there? I can recall that value. How do I recall that value? I click on MR. So the moment I click on MR, it will show you 56. Now let's say I don't want to do anything. I want to clear out the memory. So I can say MC. The moment I do that, basically there's nothing stored in the memory right now. This 56, because we wrote 56 some time back or rather we retrieved it, it is just displaying it to you. It is not in the memory at this point of time. So let's say I clear this out and I say, hey, tell me what is there in the memory? It will say nothing because there's nothing in the memory right now. We did MC. So we cleared out what was there in the memory. So let's do it again. Now 56, I say MS. Let's click here. Now you saw M here. So in the memory, 56 is stored as a number. Now, if I want to increase this number, okay, so let's do this. I don't have anything right now. M, so there's something stored in the memory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's increment the number by say six. So I'll click on six and say M plus. The moment I've done this, you don't see anything happening, right? Do, do you see number 62 anywhere? No. So let's clear this. But now the moment I do M R, which is recall, you will see that number is 62. So what happened in the back end is the initial memory was 56. I added six to that. So it became 62. So the new value which is stored in memory is 62. Now let's say I want to change this. I want to reduce this by say 12. So what I'm going to do is again, let's clear out the slate first. I have still 62 stored in the memory. I say 12 and M minus. So what will happen as you guessed correctly, 62 minus 12. So it will become 50. So the next time, if I recall the memory, it will show me 50, right? Working well. So this is the functionality that you have for M plus M minus. So if you want to increment something or decrement something. So this is something that you can do. Now, let's say you have computed, let's clear out the memory. So there's nothing in the memory at this point of time. So let's say I do one computation. Let's say I do 25 into four. Okay, I've done that very simple calculation. I have 100. I want to use it at a later point of time. So I'm going to say MS, store in the memory. Okay, great. 
Now, this question, I suddenly, let's say, leave it midway. I do something else and I come back to this question. And I know that the remaining part that I had to calculate was going to be, let's say, 3 cube and adding it to this particular memory that is there. So I can come here and say, okay, 3 into 3 into 3, and that's going to be 27. And I will say, okay, fine, add this to the memory. The moment I do that, it has been added to the memory. And now I do MR, so it will show me 127. So the calculator definitely has some utility, but the utility is very, very limited because of course you cannot do a lot of high-end mathematical computations. In some cases, this will prove to be useful. So if you are somebody, especially somebody who uh, has this habit of rechecking your calculations, this will come very handy in that case. If you're somebody who is not very, very good at calculations, so let's say, for example, uh, the question says you have to calculate 3 by 8 of, let's say, 80. And uh, for whatever reasons, you're not very comfortable doing something like that, you can always do this, right? You can use a calculator in that case. So it's recommended to use to some students, but not everybody is going to need it. So there will be very few questions where you're going to need a calculator. Having said that, I suggest that all of you at least do some basic mathematical operations on this. Try out uh, or spend about 15 to 20 minutes and I'm sure all of you will become comfortable in using it. On the test day, mostly you will not need it in majority of the questions. In some questions, if there is, let's say, a calculation intensive DI set or let's say two or three quant questions where you need it, you should be confident to use it. And that's why spend some time before you go. So that's it. I hope I've given you overview of the operations that you can do and spend some time so that you become comfortable. Thank you so much for watching. Wish all of you all the best. I'll see you soon. Bye. Take care.